California Senator Dianne Feinstein is the top Democrat on the Judiciary Committee and joins me now. Thank you very much, Senator. Good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Good to see you. Oh, well, Lindsey Graham already spoke out on the Today Show saying that this is really damaging, that this contributes to the impression that Bob Mueller will have to look at, that there was an attempt to cover up or to mislead. Uh, we don't know how winning the president was, but what do you think the impact of this is if it, in fact, as is reported, the president was part of this misleading story, this misleading account of that Russia meeting? Well, if that proves to be true, and I, I think Senator Graham wouldn't say it without uh, some uh, strong indications that, in fact, it is true. And that he wrote, he rewrote uh, a statement uh, to obfuscate the purpose, the real purpose of the meeting. That is a problem. Now, we'll have to wait and see. I have no clue what he said. But I, I do know this, Andrea. I wish we could get away from these things. Um, from my position, I see what's happening in the rest of the world, and I have deep concern about our inability to focus on real problems and real problem solving. Um, and before you can get away and look at Russia and North Korea and all the other threats, which we're all uh, really concerned and we've been reporting on, you have this, these distractions from the White House and, and the ongoing investigation. Is there any legal issue that would arise from the president contributing to a false statement in contrast to what his lawyers were telling the public, God meet the press and elsewhere? Well, I can't answer that. But certainly it's one more fact of something that he should not have been doing. And let me say something about General Kelly. He is an adult. He knows the world. Uh, he has uh, supervised, supervised 250,000 employees and a whole field of battle. Uh, I think he knows what he's doing. And one of my hopes is that in addition to being a chief of staff, he can be not a co-president, but a man whose advice is valued. The president mentioned to Senator Grassley and I when we went in to see him over Gorsuch how much he valued um, General Kelly and what General Kelly has done and Ge General Kelly's thinking on matters. So my hope is that General Kelly will be more uh, of a participant in some of the big things. Russia, if it's true, Russia's mounting troops on the border of um, European countries uh, with a uh, star tank division. Uh, we ought to know that. We ought to be doing something about it. We certainly ought to say the time has come to talk with North Korea and stop this and talk with them subject to no preconditions but sit down and negotiate a solution because everything I know is that there is no military answer to this. If you, if for a moment, if you look at what the DMZ is today, 750,000 North Korean troops behind that hill line at the end of the plain and those hills studded with rockets. We have 28,000 troops there, and Seoul is a 25-minute drive uh, to the DMZ. There is no military solution. A war would mean the death of hundreds of thousands of people, and it makes no sense. So we, and isolating a nation, in my view and my study of history, does not work. So a top-notch team should reach out and be, say, we are ready to sit down and talk with you, North Korea, and do this at the highest levels. And in fact, I wanted to share with you something else that Lindsey Graham said on the Today program today, because there's a lot of talk about a first strike. We know that there are military plans. Obviously, we have military plans for everything, and particularly for North Korea, especially given the new intelligence analysis from DIA that uh, we were two years wrong about when they might be able to uh, to put the warhead on that missile and miniaturize it. But this is what Lindsey Graham had to say today to Matt Lauer. Every military expert says there is no good military mm -hmm. option. Uh, they're wrong. 
there is What's a military a good option to destroy North Korea's program and North Korea itself. Are you saying it's okay to use a military option that immediately endangers the lives of millions of people in that region? I'm saying it's inevitable unless North Korea changes because you're making our president pick between regional stability and homeland security. I don't know what your reaction to that is. Well, Premature. my reaction is that Lindsey Graham should get a classified briefing like the ones I have had and sit down with um, Secretary Mattis, which I have done. Okay, I think I, I think I understand, especially after having interviewed General Dunford last week, last week, what the implications are because of the artillery, because of the millions of people in South Korea, to say nothing of Japan, of what the implications would be. If well, there's more to it than even that, and it's all classified, but we know much more about these weapons and um, where they are and what the difficulties are, and that's all I can say. Uh, one of the things that I've been reporting, not to put you on the spot, is that uh, we're talking about tunnels here, we're talking about mobile launchers, we're talking about launchers that now, missiles that are now launched with solid state fuel, not the liquid fuel, so they're not on the launch pad for so long. So it's, it's let me just pause it, it's hard to target them. It would be hard to take them out or to know that we're getting everything out. China may know more than we do, but we don't know a whole lot about what's happening underground. Leaving that All there, I can say, Andrea, yeah. is that you're correct. Thank you for that. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> Let's talk about Russia, because the president has yet to sign the sanctions bill. It was obviously a veto-proof majority, 98 to 2 in the Senate, 40, 419 to 3 in the House. He doesn't have a whole lot of choices here, and Vice President Pence has been giving very strong, explicit speeches in Estonia, in Georgia, as he travels around the region. Uh, is there any question about what the president needs to do on these Russia sanctions? No, and I think what Vice President Pence has been doing is very helpful. Uh, he has stated the position clearly and distinctly, and he is in an area where the Russians practice military intimidation and may be setting up to do so again. So I think his visit is very timely. I think that's one thing that is working. Um, with respect to the White House, we really have to get away from all of this stuff every day. We really have to go to problem solving. And the best people should be brought forward to do that problem solving. And I think the president ought to really put together, if he hasn't already, some high level teams of people who are militarily knowledgeable, um, government knowledgeable about what's going on in some critical places in the world today and fashion plans to deal with it. They don't have to be announced right away, but my sense is that this isn't happening. And I don't think anybody wants to, in this country, wants to be America caught when we're not ready for it. So I think um, almost day by day, um, I had the Saudi ambassador in a few moments ago talking about Yemen, where we've had 10,000 children die from cholera. And that whole Saudi advance is going very badly in that sense. And these are things that we ought to be concentrating on and solving these problems instead of, uh, well, you know, this meeting or that meeting and changing views and tweeting and creating an instability where there should be stability. Speaking of stability, I wanted to ask you about Jeff Sessions. You are the top Democrat on the Judiciary Committee with oversight. The Attorney General is going to be speaking publicly for the first time in a couple of days in Atlanta at a law enforcement conference. Uh, this comes after the president was rebuked by police chiefs for what he said on Friday, uh, suggesting that uh, police ought to be tougher against suspects and uh, uh, not observe the protocols against harming suspects as they're being arrested. Uh, First of all, Jeff Sessions, should he stay as attorney general, what about rumors that he might be moved over to Homeland or to some other agency? Well, Jeff Sessions has done nothing to deserve termination. And I don't always agree with him, that's true. But I really disagree 
uh, using him as a political pawn. Uh, it's, it, the president can transfer him to Homeland Security. But if the purpose is what many of us think it is, and that's to stop uh, the investigation of Bob Mueller and his team, that will not work because I believe that will be something that none of us can condone. And it could well be the beginning of the end of this short presidency. I don't want that to be the case. But this is the red zone. And no president should enter it without knowing fully what the repercussions are. I think that could not be clearer. Thank you very much. Senator You're Feinstein, very always good to talk to you. Thank you.